Good afternoon, everybody. We will be getting started in just a couple of minutes. We're going to wait for some folks to join on in. Uh, my name is Maxine. I work over at Tutor.com, and I'm really excited to present this webinar in partnership with SC Discus um, to talk about Tutor.com for parents, kind of the different features that parents might be the most interested in, how the platform works, uh, and just kind of all of that information. So again, we're gonna get started in just about a minute while we wait for some more folks to join on in. While we are waiting for folks to join, there are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. First off, if you can't stay for the entire presentation, no worries, there will be a follow-up email that will include a recording for you to view at any point. You can also share that recording to anybody who you think might be interested in what we go over. And then additionally, if you have any questions at any point throughout the presentation, there is a question box attached to your control panel and you'll be able to drop your questions in there. And at the end, uh, we will have some time to go over all of those questions. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started now. So again, thanks for joining us today. My name is Maxine, I work over at tutor.com and I'm really excited to kind of talk about tutor.com from a parent's perspective. We have a lot of information to go over today. So I'll just go ahead and get started right now. So the first thing that, you know, obviously everybody's going to need to know in order to access the program is how to get in. Luckily, it is as a featured resource on the scdiscus.org site. All you have to do is click access tutor.com and then you will eventually be brought to our landing page. And it's gonna look something similar to this. Now, as long as you're within the state of South Carolina, you will be able to access with no issue and you don't have to enter in any other information. Now, over here, uh, one thing I would recommend if you're ever working with parents, if you are a parent, is the take a tour button. This gives a nice one to two sentence long summary on each of the different features. So if you're ever like preparing to show your child, or if you just want a quick refresher, this is going to be incredibly helpful. And it goes through every single feature uh, that is available. Now, uh, additionally, as you can see, connect with a tutor now is bolded. Everything else is uh, grayed out. Now, that's because I, as a guest right now, I did not create an account or anything. I can still access connecting with a tutor. So if I had a child that needed help with a math problem and I uh, got into the site, all I would have to do is click connect with a tutor now page. And I would just simply fill out this information. So I would choose math, pre-algebra, choose their grade level, and then enter in the question. Then my child can get uh, help that way. Now we're gonna be going over this in just a second, but I do wanna talk about uh, creating an account, some of the benefits that it has, and a reason why you as a parent maybe would want to create an account uh, for your children. So obviously you can see uh, you have the opportunity to schedule a tutoring session, submit a paper for review, drop off a math question. There's a bunch of video content that is also available if you create an account. So it really widens the possibilities of how you can interact with the platform. Now, creating an account itself is very simple. All you have to do is click create an account, or as you saw when I went to connect with a tutor now, there was a pop-up, and then you just fill in this information. So your first name, your email address, your password, and then date of birth. Now, this is something that is incredibly important for parents to understand. We are COPA compliant. We take the privacy of students very seriously. So if I were to put that my birthday was uh, through the date of birth was 13 years or younger, I'm going to have a COPA account. That means it is going to be restricted because there is certain information that we're not able to save, uh, which means we're not able to provide certain resources. So again, let's say uh, you are a parent or you know a parent who works with a uh, fifth grader, for example, and they want to uh, create an account, they want to have access to all of these features. What I would recommend is the parent create an account under their own information. So it would be the parent's first name, the parent's email address, and the parent's date of birth. 
then this can kind of become a family account. And basically everybody in that family, whether it's the mom, the dad, the brother, the sister, everybody can access, log into that account and utilize all the different features in it. So that is another option uh, for anybody who's working with the younger students or younger children, creating a family account like that. Now, again, keep in mind, creating an account is completely optional. You don't have to create an account. It is not required. You can connect with a tutor completely anonymously, but there are some extra features that you get when you do create that account. Now, uh, then you just hit I agree to uh, terms of use and then create an account. Now, I already have an account, so I will just log in and hopefully I remembered the username and password correctly. Awesome. And now you can see in this top navigation bar, everything's bolded, which means I have access to all the different features that you may want when working with children of any age. But the first thing that I'm going to go over is probably our number one feature that people utilize, and that's connect with a tutor. So again, I'm just going to go to this page, and you'll see you just have to enter in this information. So earlier, I was talking about a pre-algebra session, for example. Let's say uh, my child, let's say I had a kid in 11th grade taking chemistry, and they were struggling with chemistry. They weren't understanding different topics, or they had a homework assignment they didn't know how to do. It's very simple to get that kind of tutoring. All you do is for the topic, choose science. For the subject, you choose chemistry. And for the grade, you choose the grade level. So I said 11th grade, I would put 11th grade. The grade level is important because it helps the tutor have a better idea of what age range that they're going to be tutoring. Because tutoring an 11th grader on reading or writing is going to be very different than tutoring a fifth grader and the type of feedback that the tutor is going to be providing. Now, once you fill out that information, you can decide how you want to connect with your tutor. You can have a chat only session. So think like any kind of IMing service where you're just typing back and forth. That's how you're going to be communicating with the tutor. We also have a chat and voice session. Now that allows you to speak back and forth with a tutor. This is going to be incredibly helpful, uh, you know, for your younger students. So think any, uh, anyone in elementary school who is practicing their reading. It's going to be really helpful because they can actually talk back and forth with the tutor. Um, it's additionally going to be helpful for those higher uh, or more difficult subjects like chemistry, like calculus, uh, like a research paper, where you're going to be able to be able to talk back and forth instead of having to type out lengthy explanations. So that is just another option that is available for folks that uh, want to use that. Now, in order to have the chat and voice, you do have to create an account. So that is just another feature that does get unlocked. And then you type in your question. So if we're going with the chemistry question or a chemistry example, um, I can type in something generic or specific. What I mean by that is, let's say uh, my child was struggling with covalent bonds. They didn't understand the concept of covalent bonds. They went over it in class and it just wasn't connecting with them. I can type in here in this question box, I don't understand covalent bonds. Can we go over them? And our tutor is going to be able to take that, bring in examples, kind of explain what a covalent bond is, how they work, and kind of make sure that you have a better understanding once you leave that session. Conversely, if I had a child who was working on a homework assignment, and whether they didn't understand the entire worksheet or they were struggling with question number six in particular, I can type out that question if I have it as P if I have it as a PDF or a like PNG, I can attach that file to the uh, session. And then I can work directly on that specific problem. So really whatever kind of help it is that you need, you can get help in the classroom. And before we go into uh, kind of the classroom and as well as like who our tutors are, I do just wanna highlight all the different subjects. So again, we have math, science, English, writing, reading. We have like all of these different course subjects that really any child who's going through class is going to need. 
Um, and again, we have even things as a parent, I know was a very big struggle during COVID and especially now that things are going back to normal, these study skills coaching and making sure that you know your children or the children of parents are aware of these different resources that they have. They can connect with one of our tutors and talk about taking notes or healthy habits or how to manage any stress that they have uh, from school and maybe their extracurriculars. So this is going to be a fantastic piece for uh, parents to be aware of. Now, once you fill out all this information, you just hit connect now. And in about a minute or so, we're gonna connect you to our tutors. Now, before we go into the classroom and kind of just give you an idea of what a tutoring session looks like, I did want to kind of highlight the uh, application process for our tutors. So this is just a very quick overview, but it is a very rigorous screening process. So essentially in a year, we can have sometimes up to 200,000 people uh, register or try to become tutors with us. We then review all their resumes and only bring in about 23% of those uh, of those applicants based off of minimum education requirements and minimum requirements. Then once we uh, once they pass through that stage, we have uh, what we call subject expert exams. So essentially we make them take a test so that they can we can see uh, how well they know the topic they want to tutor. And these aren't just simple tests. These are sometimes tests where anything below a 90 is a fail. So they're very difficult in order to pass. And as you can see, only 7.2% of applicants actually pass this stage. So the pool continues to shrink and shrink. We then have a sort of interview process. This is to make sure that our tutors actually know how to teach what they want to tutor because understanding the concepts and teaching the concepts are two completely separate things. And then after that, uh, we have them go through background checks. So we know that for parents, it is a very big concern, kind of safety online. And we take that very seriously. Not only do we do background checks for their educational credentials to make sure that, you know, they say that they went to this school and they did go to this school and they got that degree, but we also do criminal background checks on the local, state, and uh, federal level. So we kind of go through all of that entire process. And again, it is such a rigorous process that out of all of the uh, people that apply to become our tutors, only about one to 2% of those people become our tutors. And then we also have a full like quality assurance uh, process where we're constantly going through sessions and making sure that the tutors are kind of up to snuff and we and are meeting our uh, requirements to continue to be tutors. So it's a very rigorous process and uh, it is difficult to become a tutor and you kind of have to go through an entire lengthy process to do that. So I just want to give you an idea of what that's like so that you have an idea if you are a parent who your children are going to be working with or if you are working with parents, you can kind of inform them that it like the safety and security of the platform. Now, moving on, once you actually connect with a tutor, you're gonna be brought into our tutor.com classroom. Now, this is very easy to use. I've gone on uh, school visits where I've worked with elementary school students to utilize the platform and they're able to connect and have that session with no problem. It is really a platform that uh, has been created to make it as easy as possible for young students, as well as older students um, and adults. But basically anything that I draw in here, the tutor is going to be able to see and vice versa. So it's a truly collaborative experience. If I go down here, you can add circles, squares, add text if you want to start labeling things. But the main thing is underneath this image over here or this piece over here, you can import images. So if again, I take a screenshot of my homework assignment, I can upload that after the session starts and then throw it into the top right corner over here. And that way I don't need to flip through my notes and the tutor is going to be able to see all of the work that uh, me as a student would need. Additionally, you can bring in different formulas. So the slope of a line, so again, it just gets all brought into this classroom so that again, your children or your students 
I uh, don't need to be flipping back and forth between the notes trying to find something. It's just all in one spot. And then lastly, different shapes. So again, if you're working on like basic geometry, you can bring in all these different geometric shapes. You can bring in some 3D shapes as well. And then the coolest thing, and this is for parents who are working with kids doing basic graphing, uh, just kind of plotting, you can actually bring in graphs. And if I go over here, I drag that in here. And then in the bottom left-hand corner is where we can change the whiteboard to a graph paper. And then you just line things up and you can start to do some basic plotting like this. So again, really there's a ton that you can do within just this portion of the whiteboard. Additionally, you can create multiple whiteboards. So if your child is working in the classroom and thinks that they're running out of space, no, they're not. There's always going to be more and more space for them to work on. And all of that information is getting saved so they can just kind of flip back and forth. Next is the graphing calculator. And I really wanna spend some time here just to uh, mention why this is going to be super helpful uh, from a parent perspective. Uh, graphing calculators get complicated, especially once you go into trigonometry and those more complicated subjects. Uh, and you might not be able to help your child through a problem. Uh, they can connect with a tutor and actually bring that graph into the tutoring classroom. That way they don't have to try to uh, explain something that only they can see. And on top of that, 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 that they don't understand themselves. So this just, again, it brings all of that into the classroom for the tutor to be able to see. And it can really help with the stress levels of students working on you know, trigonometry problems. But this is a fully fledged graphing calculator. Additionally, we have a code editor that people can use uh, if your child is in a coding class. And then a text editor. This is like Google Docs, essentially. Whatever it is that I type here, the tutor is able to see and interact with. So I can bring in different portions of my paper that I'm working on and work on it live with the tutor. You can also share a file. So again, if there is a worksheet that you want your child to be working on, you can uh, you know, upload that file here. Uh, or if there's a paper that they're working on, they can upload that file here. The tutor is going to be able to download that and share their screen and work on it that way. Now, in the bottom right-hand corner, this is where you're going to be talking back and forth. So nobody's going to respond to me because I'm in a practice classroom. But essentially, this is where you, if you had a chat-only session, you would be talking back and forth. So it's right here in the classroom. Now, if I decide to have a voice session, there would be a button over here saying connect your audio. I would click that button. A pop-up would show up and just make sure that I have my audio device connected. Now, if there are any situations where maybe your computer doesn't have a built-in microphone or your headset is broken, uh, students can actually utilize their phones, whether that is a landline or a cell phone, and they can connect to, to the tutor that way. So we provide a toll-free number and an anonymous PIN that will then turn your cell phone basically into your microphone. So you can work in the classroom like that. So for any parents who maybe are worried about technological constraints, that will be, uh, you will be able to kind of get around that uh, for that. Additionally, uh, Tutor.com works in just about every online uh, browser. So whether that is Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you name it, you can actually connect with a tutor. Um, you can also do this on your phone as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can work with our tutors, um, whether mobile or on your desktop. Now, once you finish the session, you can hit end session. Now, it's not going to pop up right now, but there is a post-session survey that I do want to highlight. There are two things in that post-session survey that are important for parents to understand. So the first thing is you can favorite a tutor. Now, favoriting, favoriting a tutor is something I'm going to talk a little bit more about in the future. But essentially, let's say I connected with a tutor. I really like that session. They explained it to me in a way that made sense. I can save that tutor and work with them again. So uh, a lot of parents that I talk to um, want a little bit more consistency for their children. And this is a way that they can get that. 
um, they can have their child connect with the same person over and over again. Additionally, if you want proof that your child is actually connecting to tutors and using the platform, um, all you, there is an option to email a transcript. So that is something that you can do as well and have uh, you know, your child email a transcript to you to show, hey, I connected with this tutor. Now, heading back over here, the next main thing that I'm gonna talk about for a parent is the scheduling a tutoring session. Now, the reason I'm gonna highlight this is because again, I work with a lot of parents and they talk about wanting consistency and a schedule to the education practice, especially when it's at home outside of school hours. And this is going to be perfect for that. Um, basically, if you create an account, again, like I showed off, um, you can schedule up to three different sessions at once across all of these different subjects. So again, no matter what it is that your child is struggling in, they will be able to uh, schedule a session. So let's go ahead and go down to, uh, let's say chemistry again. That's my go-to, the one that I always struggled with. Now I can order by next available, the highest rated or the total number of reviews, but you'll basically be able to scroll through all of these uh, tutors, find one that you want to schedule with. So let's say I want to schedule with Kendra. I would click schedule and then it will bring me a calendar showing what days they're available and what times. So I can connect, I can say I want to connect with Kendra on April 10th at 2 p.m. And again, you just kind of fill out this information. You say you want science, chemistry, what your grade level is. Again, this helps the tutor have an idea of what kind of, uh, kind of feedback they will provide. Um, and then you type in your question and you just hit scheduled session. And then on a Monday at two o'clock, when I log into my account, there will be a banner saying connect to your scheduled session. And I'll be able to just click that button and hop in to that session. And again, like I mentioned, um, if I go back here, we have tutors for all of these different topics. So basically anything you can get live tutoring for, you can connect with a scheduled tutor as well. And again, you can connect up to, or you can schedule up to three sessions at a time. Uh, and you can just kind of go through and find whichever ones meet your scheduling needs. Additionally, um, once you start favoriting tutors, uh, if they are available to schedule with, you'll be able to continue to schedule with them and there will be an option that I'll be showing off in just a moment uh, in order to do that. So again, this is going to be a really cool resource for parents who want to kind of regiment the tutoring practice outside of school. Now, I'm not gonna focus too much on the submitting a paper for review or a drop off math question beyond just saying um, that if any parents are working with kids who are working on essays or complicated math problems, uh, if, they, if the student isn't comfortable connecting with a live tutor, there is an option to drop off that paper for review or drop off that math question for review. Um, and then you will get a feedback form like this Essentially, uh, the tutor goes through rubrics, everything, and will let you know what in your paper you're struggling on. And you even get a review document with more specific feedback where they leave uh, comments in the margins of the paper itself. And then for the math uh, drop off, basically we will uh, walk through that problem that the student was struggling in, uh, both written out and visually so that we kind of hit the two major learning types. Um, and it's just a great resource for students to use this kind of guide and walkthrough for the rest of their assignment. Now, hopping back in here, um, the next things that I wanna talk about are the test prep resources. So we know that the SAT and the ACTs are both uh, very popular tests even now, even though now uh, they are kind of optional for a lot of colleges, it's always a great extra resource to put you one step above, and we have resources for that. Now, I've done whole webinars about this in the past, so I'm not gonna go super, super in depth, but we have 10 different practice tests for the SAT and the ACT that students can utilize, log into the platform and take. And once you finish that test, 
it will give you a detailed score report where basically we highlight what portions of the test you did well on, what you struggled in, and the different resources that you might need. Um, so you'll be able to go through the entire test, see what different subjects and topics you struggled on. And we have videos for each and every one of those. So if you were struggling on a specific reading type or a math question, we have a video for that and then a practice quiz for that as well, a practice drill uh, to make sure that you best understand the different concepts that are gonna be going on in this test. You, we also have some admissions information, uh, information about choosing the correct college for you, FAFSA information. All of that kind of stuff is also available within this portal. And we've done, again, different webinars and we'll be doing some more in the future. So if you ever want to know a bit more about the SAT and ACT Essential specifically, please sign up for those. I'd be more than happy to share that information then. Now, additionally, we have a video, a video library. So for the AP videos, we have some great video content for anybody taking calculus, AB, chemistry, English language, environmental science, et cetera. Um, and these are just short five minute videos uh, about concepts that are going to be over the tests or just information about how the test is done overall. So it's gonna be another great resource. The next resource I wanted to quickly talk about is our math and English early edge videos. So these are created for a younger audience. So you can think kind of late elementary school, early middle school. They kind of go over the specific uh, topics that you can see here. So fractions, and decimals, understanding percents, uh, mean, median, mode, factors, all of these different videos are going to be incredibly helpful, not only for students who are preparing for middle school and preparing for those more like complicated subjects, but also anybody who might need a refresher in the fundamentals. So maybe you have a child who is going to summer school and they just need to quickly brush up on some of the information that they're gonna be going over. This is going to be a great resource because they're very short and easily digestible uh, videos for students. And again, we have these for arithmetic, algebra, geometry, statistics, reading, writing, and grammar. Now, uh, there's going to be one more topic that I'm going to go over before we go over the account features. But I do just want to uh, remind everybody that if they are, if you have any questions at any point or want me to go over something a bit more in depth, please let me know there is that question box and I'd be happy to go over that once I finish uh, these last couple of topics. I just want to remind everybody. Another great resource for parents is going to be our Skill Center Resource Library. So we have resources for uh, people preparing for careers. So maybe you want to uh, write a resume for a summer internship uh, or you're kind of kind of preparing for an interview. We have resources for that. We have resources for the different tests. So again, the SAT, the ACT, the AP exams, uh, even GED, high set stuff like that. We have the, we have content available for uh, you and your children there. And I highly recommend playing around. We literally link out to thousands of different resources across the web that we've vetted um, and that we think would be helpful. But the thing that I wanted to highlight right now is under the study resources, and this is specifically for elementary school students. Um, and essentially we have created proprietary worksheets um, that students can access through here. Parents can download, print out if they want their children to work on them. All you have to do is go to the math topic, go to elementary subject, and then as you can see here, we have kindergarten through fifth grade worksheets. Um, and you can basically click on this and look at the 23 worksheets that we have for third grade students. You'll be able to download them. They look like this. They're very simple and easy to understand. They go over sometimes multiple different questions. And again, you can print these out and have children work on them. Or if you're a parent and they're struggling on that, you can actually connect to a tutor and just upload this file. And the tutor is going to be able to walk through with your child uh, that specific problem. So again, I just wanted to quickly highlight this is another option that is available.
And then the last thing that I have to go over is the My Account features. So again, as I mentioned, as a parent, creating an account for your children is going to be a super helpful resource, not only because you get access to all of these different features that I've kind of talked about, but also you have access to account features. So for example, any session that I have uh, when I'm logged into an account will automatically be saved for me. So I can view that and at any point in time, if I had a session two weeks ago on covalent bonds, and now I have another quiz coming up that's gonna cover that, I can easily just hop back into that session and I will be able to read the transcript if I had a uh, chat session with my tutor. If I had an audio session, I'll be able to replay that and I'll also be able to get screenshots of the classroom showing the work that we did. So all of that information does get saved. And again, that is going to be incredibly helpful for students. And then the next is my favorite tutors. As I mentioned earlier, both uh, when connecting with a live tutor and scheduling, you are you have the ability to save a tutor. And while no, no one's going to be here because I haven't saved any tutors, essentially, as you start having sessions and you save tutors and you find tutors that you like working with, they will start populating this page. And you'll be able to see if they're online at that moment. And if so, you'd be able to connect with them. Uh, or if they're available for scheduling, you will be able to schedule a session with them. So it just adds, again, that layer of consistency that a lot of students tend to need and a lot of parents really want in today's day and age. Um, so I did just want to highlight those as well. And then the last feature is my locker. Any files that I work on in a tutor.com uh, classroom will get saved to the locker. Um, so it's basically like your Google Drive of tutor.com uh, where things are getting saved and you can access them from when, wherever you are. Now, that is just about everything that I had to go over. Um, again, I really hope you found some of this information helpful about kind of the parent perspective, what resources they think might be the most useful, um, just from my own personal experience, kind of presenting and working with a lot of parents as well. Um, but if you have any questions, if you want me to go over anything, please, please, please don't hesitate to let me know. There is a question box attached to your control panel. There will also be a recording that is sent out uh, at the end of the presentation in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out for that and feel free to share it with anybody who you think might be interested or you think uh, might find this, re this resource helpful. Um, and yeah, uh, I did see one question coming in and it has to do with the live tutors. So they were asking if we have languages other than English. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is for any students or children who are learning languages, we do support them. Uh, you can find that under the topic, world languages, in the subject, we have all of these different subjects available. So again, let's say as a parent, my child is in a Spanish class and they're really struggling, they don't understand the conjugations. Um, you can just click here, uh, again, choose the grade level, and then you can uh, answer, enter in your question and connect with the tutor. And again, this is for people who are learning that language. So for students who are learning Spanish, Italian, French, et cetera. Now, as for what topics can be tutored in Spanish, so for people whose primary languages are Spanish it's themselves, if you just click this drop down menu uh, where you see English, you switch it over to Espanol, and we have all of those core subjects. So we have math, science, social studies. We also have writing in Spanish and those study skills topics. So again, anybody whose primary language is Spanish can actually connect with a Spanish speaking tutor and have a session completely in Spanish. And again, we have all of the kind of core subjects from primary all the way up to statistics. Same thing with, chem uh, with uh, science and social studies. So again, this is going to be a great resource for anybody whose primary language is Spanish. Uh, yes, the Spanish speaking tutors are available 24 seven as well. So Spanish and English tutors are available both 24 seven. 
All right, are there any other questions? I'll leave the floor open for just another moment. Um, if there aren't any questions now, but they come up in the future, again, there is going to be that follow-up email that is sent out. Feel free to respond with a question. I'd be more than happy to help. Um, but yeah, I'll leave the floor open for another moment. All right, it doesn't look like any other questions are coming in, but again, thank you so much for joining. I hope you found some of this information helpful um, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day.